Hello everyone. I have here another VM out of the Chioptric series, another vulnerable VM. This will be the last VM from this series which I want to cover simply because the last Chioptrics VM uh, didn't didn't run very well on my system. I couldn't get it to work and I couldn't couldn't be bothered to actually look into it simply because there are many other vulnerable VMs out there which I could choose from. So even though there's another one, this will be the last one I want to cover. Now, this is also a beginner VM, so it's uh, fairly simple there. At least two ways to get root. I only I will only show you one now, but there are others. So if you want to poke around, you should at least find one more. Now, the first thing we want to do after the VM is running, right? We open a terminal and we do a simple net discover or use any tool you want, but just find out uh, what IP the vulnerability is running on. So now the 10.1 is the DHCP, so the 10.100 would be the DVM in this case. All right, the first thing I want to do is use nmap and see what's on there, what's running. So we do a minus pn minus a minus o. And we type in the IP 10, 10, 10, 100. All right. So what do we have here? So apparently there's at least a SSH running. Well, that was obvious. There's a HTTP running. On the first side, it uh, looks like nothing special here. And we have port 139 and 445 for Samba. It looks interesting, so we will come back to that later. And what else do we have? Nothing, that's it. Okay, so we will start with Samba in this case and see what we can get there. Usually you can at least enumerate some uses on uh, those ports or services. So that's we want, what we want to do. To do that, we you can use the tool Endum for Linux, which does all the heavy lifting uh, when it comes to enumera uh, enumeration and so on. So clear the, t clear the terminal and enum for Linux and you simply type in the IP. It's that simple. Now you just wait until everything is done. You should understand what the tool is doing here and you should be able to do it yourself simply because it's not always that easy um but if you ever did it once yourself in you know, all the ba all this all the basic tasks the, the tool will do for you if you did that by yourself and you, you understand it then go ahead and use the tool all the time that's what i'm doing now okay if you go through see what we got the tool found at least three users so user one lone ferret which by the way is the nickname of the creator of uh, those series of those vulnerable vms then we have john and we have robert okay what else do we have we have two shares print and ipc uh, mapping denied so we will not look into those for now I guess that will, that is not the point of this VM. Could be obviously, but uh, I don't think so for now. So uh, remember there was a port 80 or HTTP running. So we want to check that out first. So we type in the IP, see what we have. Looks like a login panel to me. Let go secure. I think we had it in the last uh, VM as well. So now the first thing we want to do, or we would do in this case, is fire up Nictor and uh, see if there's anything else interesting. I will skip that for you now because I already, uh, well, so solved that VM. I solved it. I solved that VM. Uh, I'll just show you um, how to get in, right? So usually those beginner VMs um, include some sort of SQL injection. So that's what we want to try first. And uh, remember, we have three users, so we have lone ferret. Let's just try to type in. Okay, we get a wrong username or password. Okay, Robert. 
I think John. Well, that would have been too easy, obviously. So uh, the first thing you want to do is try with a SQL injection. To do that, I'm going to type in here and password the following, uh, which would be one and or. Oops. Now, this is what I want to type in here in password because you can't see it. I will type it in here for you. So we type that in. One. All right, and as you can see, it worked. Uh, we get uh, immediately we get a password, which is nice. That makes everything everything very easy. And we say, okay, username John, password my name is John. Now usually you would go back and try with Robert again and with Lone Ferret. Um, I don't want to make this video too long, so I can just tell you it won't work. Uh, so we go ahead and try over SSH and see what we can get there. So we open our terminal again. And we try to log in SSH John at 10 10 10 100. And the password was my name is John. All right. As you can see, we get some sort of restricted shell. Now I had to look this part up, no, not in a walkthrough, but how to get out of a restricted shell. I would recommend just type in how to escape restricted shell in Google because there are many different ways how to get out of and I can't always remember all of them. So um, you type in help. If you type in help, you will see what commands are available, which you can use. Now those commands are heavily restricted, um, but what looks promising for now is the echo command. Uh, with the echo command, we can override this restricted shell and get into a real shell or well, air quotes, real shell. Um, I just show you how it works. So you type in echo dot system and then in brackets. Now, well, what this will do is uh, sort of in bracket, um, air quotes again, transform us to a real shell. Okay, there we are. Now, uh, from here, we're still a normal user. We're not root yet. Um, we want to elevate to root, of course. If you remember, we used a SQL injection to get the password in the first place. So there is some, is a, some sort of SQL server running. Um, now we just check in the Apache root folder if there's any, um, any PHP file or anything like that which um, holds the root password file. Now, let's see. Okay, we have a check login.php, which looks very promising. That's what we're going to use. So we open that. And very easy for us now. So here it says my SQL password for the user root is nothing. Okay, that's very easy. So we go out of Vim again. And then we just log in to the mysql server so mysql minus u root minus p and well no password that's it so we're in um you remember we're using the root user and if you check with ps aux you can see that mysql is running with the user root so that means if you can use mysql to execute system commands we can basically do anything now we can log in through the MySQL server, so we are basically on our way to root already. Now, what we want to do is we log into the MySQL server and we put our uh, user John into the root group or admin group. Now, we go back to MySQL, log in, and like I said, we want to execute system commands, so we type in select and then sys exec. And now we can basically type in anything you, we want and it will be executed with the user root. So we use the command user mod minus a g and admin john. Now what this, this will do is we'll put the user john into the group admin, which basically will, uh, will put us into the root group, I call it. 
and from there we can simply change the password of root and switch to root and that's it done now you will not get an output um, like it worked or anything you just see if you see null or um, it executed a command then you can be certain that it worked to test that we just get out of mysql again and we use sudo to check who we are who am i which would ask us for our password now if it worked we should see a root now if not then we see john or that we are not allowed to use sudo okay now as you can see we are root now so we can use that to change the password of root which we want to do so we type in sudo password root and now we can type in a new password for root which i just like to choose one two three four five one two three four five and we change to root one two three four five and that's it now usually the creators of those weems they leave some sort of um, concrete text or anything else in the root folder we want to see if any, anything is there so we check for anything and there is okay so let's see what it says concrete you've got root blah, 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 and so on okay all right that's done so like i said uh, there's another way to own this vm so if you want to check for yourself you can find at least one more um this will be the last one last vm out of this series i want to cover and after that i will move on to another one so see you next time